Good morning and welcome to Heritage Baptist Church. If you will stand and sing with me, number 50, there is power in the blood. This morning, Lord, and uh, and Lord, we just want to praise and uh, praise you for all the blessings that you have brought to us, Amen. Lord, and, uh, and the life that you have given us, Lord, and uh, and we thank you, Lord, for this church, Lord, that we have to come to serve you, Lord, and uh, and Lord, we just ask you, Lord, just to be with everyone that's in here today, Lord, and, uh, and Lord, if there's any lost souls here, Lord, that they would uh, come to know you, Lord, and uh, and Lord, we do pray for Israel, Lord, and uh, Lord, that you would just be with them, Lord, and give them peace, Lord, and uh, and Lord, just remember all our missionaries too, Lord, that's out there. Uh, doing your work, Lord, and uh, seeing souls saved, Lord, and uh, and Lord, we just ask you, Lord, just give them comfort, Lord, and uh, keep them safe, Lord, and uh, and Lord, we just love you and thank you for everything, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, in your name, Amen. Y'all may be seated. We're going to sing number five thirty-one right now. We're going to sing the first and fourth verse. Oh! 
dictionary later. The missionaries of the month are Greg and Michelle Wendell to Kenya. It's been more than a year of COVID-19. Michelle and I keep a close eye on the news coming from the United States and wonder how churches and believers are enduring this plague of virus. Hopefully, everyone reading this is back on track with church services because mutual encouragement and edification is very important within the body of Christ. It seemed reasonable to expect the support for our ministries to take a dip due to hard times, but that hasn't been the case. Pastor Julius Modian Nagome was enjoying a church service with his people one Sunday morning until the police showed up. He had a washing station out front that didn't meet their approval. It was a five-gallon bucket on a metal stand, and water could be released using a foot pedal connected to the bow. Pretty smart for out in the middle of nowhere, but the police demanded a tap operated by a hand lever. The pastor protested that the hand-operated taps were less sanitary than what they were using. It didn't matter. The rules are the rules, and don't try to be smarter than the rules. We helped Moody and the church meet the regulation and pay a $30 fine for the infraction. On a much brighter side, Pastor Modi recently sent me the news that he baptized seven believers. That's wonderful news for out in the middle of nowhere, Africa. Thank you very much for lifting us up in prayer and continuing your faithful support in these challenging times. Greg and Michelle Wendell. There's challenging times, isn't it? Everywhere. It's good to see that working. Um, and, and of course, you know the, the greatest lies in the world, right? I'm going to love you forever. Right? The check is in the mail. I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Yeah? So you just keep that working out that way. We'll get it done. I had a friend of mine that used to say, if we could get the government to be in charge of organized crime, he would be done in one week. Yeah. Be over with. Good to have you here with us and uh, all the things that go with it. But we're glad that, you, that God brought you through and brought us through a, a pandemic in the world. And I'm looking forward to going the other way. I don't like to look back. So let's keep moving going. Right. But we do have folks on our prayer list that still have COVID. Uh, members of ours are exposed to it and different things. And so it is going to be with us for probably forever. Okay. And then all the strains and things that go through it. Just uh, another way of looking at another kind of really serious flu season that just goes all year round. Amen. So keep that in your prayers. Then remember too to pray for our country. I think you're doing that. Then remember coming up in, in June pretty quick. I don't know if you watch the announcements when they roll by. Two weeks from tomorrow is our uh, Bible school start. So we want you to be a part of that with us. If you want to help in a class, well, we can put you to work. If you want to help on Friday night, because we're going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Bible teaching, Bible training stuff. And this, we're calling it the circus. So we're going to do the strong man, the fish that eat the man, all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, all the things that go through it. And then on Friday night, we're just, we're going to have like a small assembly and then we're going to do like circus fun things. We're going to we're going to see if you can walk a tightrope, if you can pick, catch a fish, if you can do all that stuff and and uh, you know, just fun stuff. So the kids will have a good time. We'll have our train out running for you to ride around in. We went to Six Flags yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, one of the greatest things about Six Flags, when it starts raining, they quit running the covered tram. Isn't that good? Right. That's sort of like being in the roofing business, but if you're not raining, you don't put it on. It is raining. It's too wet. It works. But on the way in, we rode in on it, and the guy was literally going like from one side of the road to the other like a big serpent all the time. I kept waiting for the lady in front of me to get seasick. She was wobbling a little bit. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm glad I'm behind her, right? But it was, it was quite a ride, wasn't it? Yeah, I've never You say, well, did he do it on purpose? I don't know. <clears throat> but he did keep us out of the little creek thing. Well, I'll remind you this too. Tonight after church, we ha we're going to honor our seniors. We have two, one from last year and one from this year because we didn't have a uh, deal for them in their graduations. Tonight, it's right after church. You're supposed to bring sandwiches and chips, I think, and we'll take care of the rest of the stuff, which is we're going to have 
cupcakes in their honor. Amen? Isn't it good? Right. Only if they could make a low-carb, sugar-free cupcake would that excite me. But right now, uh, so somebody says you can, but they got to be edible. See, that's the, that is the third trick in all of that kind of stuff. It's always a look in it. Then in camp, we're going to go in the 12th of July. That's going to be here pretty quick. If your kid's not registered for camp or want to go, not much to it, we'll do that. And those of you who work in Bible schools and stuff like that, between now and the end, the time we start Bible school, you have a CPS class to take and get a certificate for. So two weeks, uh, we'll probably set it up on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. I only got two. So you can make it or you can't make it. You need to be in that for us. That'll, that'll help us a whole, whole lot. Even if you work with the kids at any other time, you're supposed to be there. Right now, let's see, we we have a song from the ladies, right? You're going to... And, uh, I, well, we we got to bring a prayer first, okay? Richard has one of his relatives. Oh, Susie's daughter, right? Niece, okay, all right, here with us. I, I'll get it right later on. And so, uh, but we're glad to have you here with us visiting from Kansas, amen? She's not in Kansas anymore right now. So, <laughs> Amen. But uh, So Richard's going to come and play, uh, pray, and they're going to play. There you go. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we are here today to give you all praise and glory. Amen. And we also have our offering we need to give to you. We hope our offering is acceptable and justified in your eyes. May it go to the missionaries. May it go to taking care of our building and staff and all the other things that our church needs to be doing. So let us remember our responsibilities and take care of them at this. Amen. This we pray through Christ's name. Amen. Ladies. Amen. guys uh, daily tell your wife that you love her. Don't raise your hand. Okay, all right. Uh, that's sort of like asking in a Sunday school class, how many of you guys don't lie? <laughs> Everybody that raises their hand is a liar. So there you got it down. Because most of us have to do some of that kind of stuff. Like, does this dress look good on me? Does it make me look fat? So we don't answer those. Ooh, the dress. Yeah. Ain't that the cutest kid you've ever seen in your whole life? Ooh, yeah, kid, right. But uh, one, of, one of the things we got, how many of you feel like sometimes that, that you hear the preacher say a lot that I love the Lord? And do you have a problem with saying that, that, that you love the Lord? See, I don't have a problem with that either. I don't have a problem telling you that I love my wife, I love my kids, I love you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I, I love my church. I love people in my church, and I try to live like I love, okay? And so we're going to talk about something today when we get into our sermon about realizing the power of love. Where you guys get all mushy, okay? I'm going to preach hard to you, because I believe that's the big problem in our churches as well as in our country. Right now, we're going to sing Boundless Love. There is not a mother, sister, friend, or brother Loves the way that Jesus can He proved his love for me when he died on Calvary He gave his life for fallen men His love is a boundless love And it reaches down and 
touches me, touches me. His love, his love is an endless love that will last you all eternity. Jesus wants to love you. There is none above you. You are precious in his sight. He will never leave you when the depths assail you. He'll be with you day and night. His love, his love is a boundless love, and it reaches down and touches me. Touches me. His love, his love is a boundless love that will last me all eternity. His love, his love is a boundless love, and it reaches down and touches me. Touches me. Number four. First John chapter four. There's nothing like teaching Bible classes one place, wearing a microphone, taking it off, coming up here to sing, taking it off. You know what I mean? Take your microphone, change another one. I can't remember which one I got on half the time on Sunday mornings, most of us if I got it on. Thank God for all the people in the back. They're they're taking care of me back there. So if you got your Bibles and look there with me, we're going to be in the book of First John. And uh, we want you to try this with us, okay? How many of you guys need subtitles when I do this? Ha, ah, these are subtitles, all right? That's, that's what it is. Um, years ago, look at this. In chapter number 4, verse number 7. I'm just going to read two verses, ready? Chapter 4, the book of 1 John, verse 7 and 8. You don't want to get too long a text. Everybody gets buried in the text sometimes. Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved... Let us w love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. You say, preacher, I want to see that in print. There it is right there. Here it is. All love comes from God. Now, this is my, this is me. Okay, I'm thinking with me. And I think the scripture supports this. If there weren't any God and we were not created by God, some of those attributes that he gave us would not be there. You say, well, you know, I believe in evolution and used to, a chicken used to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex and then it came down. They should have picked a smaller one for a chicken. You know what I mean? Something smaller. <clears throat> I, I want you to understand something. I don't have any faith at all in evolution. It's not scientific, and you can go any way you want to, okay? There's no spontaneous life. Life does not start by itself. Life comes from life. And we'll break that down someday when you get your physics lessons finished. We'll talk to you about a lot of other stuff. But I want you to get this, okay? In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. All right, that's how the scripture starts. You got trouble with the first verse. I'm thinking the rest of the Bible is going to throw you for a loop. In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. And then he did all kinds of stuff with it and to it to bring it into existence. I don't believe that Lucifer came down and messed up God and he had to start all over again. I don't think so. And I, I don't think so. From everything we've ever seen about any of the other planets, because the Bible says the earth was without form and void. I think we describe Mars, Venus, Jupiter, even, is Pluto still, a, is he a planet now or not? Is he out again? I forget. Okay, he's in? Is Pluto in now? He's in and out, in and out, in and out. 
oh, you guys are in school, you got to do that. You'll, you'll erase the test pretty soon, all right? But all those planets and everything out there is without life, it's void, it's form. But God, the Bible says God made the, the earth because he wanted to put a man on it. And he made it a perfect creation. Perfect in creation. Everything was just perfect. The serpent didn't crawl on his belly and eat dust. Everything was just perfect. He made a garden and he put Adam and Eve in it to take care of it. I'm not going to get into the whole background theology of this, but Satan or Lucifer, who the Bible describes as the greatest, highest, most beautiful and most talented of all the archangels, was the one who entered into the serpent and tempted Eve. All right? Do you understand that the Bible calls him the great tempter? You know why? He's the father of it. Without him, there wouldn't be any temptation. There's no temptation. My Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Right? Who I am, what I am, what I've got. What can I do? See, that's the same thing. And he used that against Eve. She saw it was good for fruit, tasted good, make you wise like a god. There's the three things. Love not the world, neither the things are in the world. For all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and, flesh and the pride of life. So without the devil, there wouldn't be any temptation. It, it ain't going to be cool in the thousand year rule and reign because the Bible says he's going to put the tempter out of the world for a whole thousand years. No tempter would be no sin because you've got to have temptation to do that. You say, well, my friends always get me to do that. Well, the devil's working on them too. No tempter is no sin. In no sin, there's no curse. It is amazing that God said during that same thousand years that the lion's going to lay down with the lamb and the, the ass won't sting and the bear won't eat the kid. Isn't it good? All right. And so you understand everything has a beginning and God, you say all things were made by God. He made the devil. Absolutely. He did. Because he had to do something that is outlandishly miraculous. Now you say, well, I, I just can't believe God, God could make the whole world. Well, number one is God. He said he did. So he did. And you'll find it about 350 to 400 references, Old and New Testament. He said he did. <clears throat> All right? If, <clears throat> if he says that he made the earth and he didn't, then he's a liar, right? But me and you both know God doesn't lie. Men do, but God doesn't. One of the things that God is, do you see the verse, is God is Love. God is love. If you remove God out of the world, you lose one of the greatest things that humans have above every other creature on the face of the earth. You lower yourself to an animal rate. You know what that is? Love. God gave you the ability to love. And there are things in this world that we love more than life. I love life. You guys like life? I do too. You know what I mean? I've never got up in the morning when everything's real bad and said, you know what? I'm just going to kill myself. I ain't doing it, okay? Cheryl ever tells you that. She lied, all right? It did it never done it, okay? I might kill myself working, doing something stupid, but you're not going to do it on purpose. I promise you, okay? Not happening. You say, well, do you ever get discouraged? Yeah. I get discouraged a lot. You ever have bad problems? You get, yeah. That's part of life. But you see, because I know how to love, I know who loves me, and I can love them back. Isn't that good? God gave us the ability to love. You know that little kid that you got? You know, those of you guys who have toddlers and a little above and going through it, isn't that a fun time? You know, really well, good. 
And those of you who've ever had twins, toddlers, you, you know a little bit about what purgatory is, right? Because I'm telling you right now, I got a set of them. They're here this morning. And I'm telling you, what one of them didn't think of, the other one thought of it. And by the time they were 18 months old, you had to put wrist chains on them and lock them in with a little peephole. And they'd still get in the cabinet and pour out the cereal. They worked on it. All right. That's an amazing thing. But you know what I've ever told them, and I know it is, my kids are grown. And my grandkids are growing up fast. And my wife and I were looking at each other the other day. And she said, time goes fast. My mother was older. She had 11 kids. And I don't even know how many grandkids. I probably have to count them up. Great grandkids. But if you ask your mom, what do you want for Mother's Day? What would you? I just want to get all of you here with me. You don't want riches and you don't want this and you don't want something for your house. And No, she'd want those other times. But if you ask me what I want, see, love goes above almost every other priority. We'll suffer for the cause of love. We just went through Memorial Day. I want you to understand something. I, I, I don't ever remember hearing a soldier say, I'm willing to die for my freedom. But I heard a lot of them say they would die for their country. And they would die for their comrades. And they did. That's love. No greater love hath any man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Real love is hard. Real love is hard. If it were as not for God being love and creating us with the ability to love, can you imagine what it'd be like in the world? How easy is it right now to get along with everybody that you love? Think what, what would happen if none of us loved each other and none of us loved God. I'm listening to you. I'm talking, the sermon title was, remember? The value of love in the world, realizing it. I, I ask God to help me do something today that might be a little bit out of character for me all the time. I, I want him to be able to tell me, through me, for me to tell you, what a wonderful, great thing when God created us with two insightful abilities. Number one, he made us so that the creature could recognize the creator. I'm not sure anything else in America, anything else in the world, or any entity in the whole world has ever understood that any better than United States of America. When we wrote our Declaration of Independence, we said we have the right to do it because we believe we came from our Creator. And He's given us certain unalienable rights. They understood that love was a, from God to us, but we also had the ability to love God back. And the short and long of it is because we can love God, we can love each other. We have the ability to love each other. Our human love is not as good as God. You understand that? It's kept in an imperfect thing. Paul would say, we have this treasure in earth and vessels. And that's who we are. Look with me a little bit here. In this. Let's look to the verse. Let us love one another. That's exactly what John in John chapter 13 said this. Jesus said it. John records it. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also may love one another. Now listen to this. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Isn't that something? That's, that's pretty good stuff. Love one another. Number two in this thing, love is of God. Love didn't just happen, you know, that 
You, you ever listen to the, to the evolutionary scale? A little one-celled animal developed and later on it figured it had to eat so it had to evolve a mouth. How long can you live without a mouth? But anyhow, for the love of, okay, you, you, love is of God. Without God, there wouldn't be any love in the world. You say, oh yeah, I love. Yeah, you do love. People love money. They love Sex, they love wild things, they love drugs, they love all, you know, they really do. They have, but they wouldn't be any of the God love, the kind of love that God loved us with and sent his son into the world to demonstrate to us if it wasn't for God. We'd have mostly not love, just lust. There's a big difference. Love comes from God. 1 John 4.19 says, we love him because he first loved us. Now listen to me, guys. I'm glad you grew up in church, and I'm glad you've been in church, and I'm glad you know all the Bible, and I'm glad that you can quote concordance after concordance and after concordance. But I'm telling you, I remember the first time I was in church when the preacher told me, and he said, God loves you. I stopped and stood up and said, you show me. In the Bible where God loves me. That was alien to anything I'd ever had, heard, saw, or been instructed with that God loved me. God is love. Love comes from God. And the scripture says in John 14, 19, we love him because he first loved us. You know, one of the greatest things, go, you remember the rich young ruler story? Go back in, the, in, the, in your Gospels and read it. And, and Mark writes it down. He said the rich young ruler came to him and said, Lord, what can I do that I may inherit eternal life? And, and he, read, he says this, and Jesus loved him. Jesus loved him. So what do you do when you love? You, you tell them the truth. You tell them what's right. You tell them what they need to do. And he said, I'll tell you what you can do. He said, have you kept all the commandments? He said, every one of them. That made him a liar, okay? Jesus didn't say that. He didn't say, that's a lie. I saw you yesterday, and I saw you. And he could have went back down the line and counted everything that God did, couldn't he? But he didn't. He took the first and great commandment, which is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he said, go sell all your stuff and give it to the poor. And the Bible says he went away. He couldn't even keep the first one. Relevant point. Jesus still loved him. For God so loved the world. Isn't that good? And then even thirdly in this, everyone that loveth God is born of God and knoweth God. I, I like it when I go to a place and there's a speaker and he'll stand up and go, I love every one of you in here. You don't even know us. But he can. Maybe it won't be the intimate love that he has with his wife or grandchildren or his kids or with God. But he can have a love in his heart for people he don't even know. You say, no way, preacher. Yeah, way. If you're part of this church and you don't give to missions, you're weird. You are the outcast, weirdo guy. You say, well, not, not that. We don't throw them out. We just make fun of them. But anyhow, if you don't give to missions... We, we send money all over the world. We're just talking about one of our missionaries in Burkina Faso. And it's nothing about bikinis there, I'll tell you that, okay? That's in Africa. It's a rough place. Hundreds of people are being killed daily there for their faith. And we pray for our missionaries that are there. We support missionaries and send them there. Why is a missionary willing to go there when so many of them know there's a threat they're going to die? Because greater love hath no man than this. Jesus loved us enough to lay down his life. Those guys are doing the same thing. And we love those people in Africa. I never met them. I'll see them in heaven, I hope. But we're doing everything in our power to make sure they get to hear what we hear. But it wouldn't be if God did not love us first. The proof is, you see, when you see the love of God and you live the love of God, you know God. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, 1 John 2, is a liar. 
The truth is not in him. Whoso keepeth his word, verily is the love of God perfected. That's 2, 4, and 5, in case you're still in there. That's what love does to us. Look at this. He that loveth not knoweth not God. I'm still in my text, guys, okay? He that does not love doesn't know God. There's no way. There's no way. My parents have been gone for decades. I still love them. There's times that I miss them so bad. I didn't even realize how much they loved me until I got old enough to go through what some of the things they went through. And they proved their love to me all the time. I'm going to tell you right now, I can tell you this, and my sisters and brothers will say, well, that my mom loved me better and my mom loved me better. And, and then just to be honest with you, for those of you guys who are out there and you've heard me say it, when my mom and I got to be great friends after we got both saved and right with God and my dad as well, but even dying and saying, you know, I, I can depend on you more than anybody else I got to do what I tell you. That's a great one. But you know, I don't love you like I do the other kids. Yeah. In heaven, she does. Amen. When I get there, and so, and I know my mom wasn't perfect because when I brought Cheryl, introduced her to him, she was afraid I wasn't ever going to find a woman, I guess. And she said, oh, sweetheart, George has never gave me a minute's trouble in all of his life. I wanted to go, you liar. You're lying right now. Is this the same woman that asked where I came from all the time? She, just, she was afraid nobody was going to take me away. Amen. But I promise you this, guys. God doesn't want you taken away. God wants you with him. Can you understand how much God loved you? The whole plan of salvation, all the Old Testament, all the New Testament, all those things that Jesus had planned from the beginning was so he could have you with him. When Jesus prayed the prayer right before he went to be crucified, he said that I may be with them and they may be with me way where I am at. That's how much he loved us. For God is love. Hereby we know that we know. I like it. Isn't that cool? You didn't know that was written in the scripture, did you? We know that we know. I'm not guessing at anything, guys. I know whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. He that saith, I know him, keep not his commandments, is a liar, the truth is not in him. Whoso keep the word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Look at that. Do you know what's wrong with us as churches? you know what's wrong with us as a society? you know what's wrong with us as a nation? We're supposed to be a Christian nation. Christianity doesn't run on law, guys. You see, well, it runs on grace. The reason it, grace is in it is because God loves us. It runs on love. He loves us. The Scripture says, I don't care what you know Christ is Savior. He said, I'll never deny them. What can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? Paul lists out everything from that is, that is, that isn't, that owned, the created, things in the earth. And they said, none of these things shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God loved us. That's good stuff. Before we see the love of God, though, you know what we see? You got your Bible in 1 John, right? Let's look at it. Starting in verse 5, he said, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Well, if he didn't reveal himself to us, we wouldn't know he loved us, right? So we have to know he's there to start with. And God is light. You say, well, preacher, that means that, you know, he is perfect. And it does. Because it says in him is no darkness at all. I told my Sunday school class before we left, I said, I talked to a guy and he said he didn't want to come to church because it's full of hypocrites. I agree. No matter how hard I try, I haven't got perfect yet. And those of you guys who pretend to do it bother those of us who really are. Okay? You know what I told him? I said, you know, I understand that. You got one or two choices. Number one, you can live out there in the lost people and spend eternity in hell with the lost people who are hypocrites. Or you can come to church with the saved people and spend eternity in heaven with the hypocrites, whichever one you choose. 
I'm not saved because I'm perfect. I'm not saved because I do everything right. I'm not saved because I do everything. I'm saved because for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And when he died for me, that's where I'm at. Jesus is the proof that God loved us. How do you know that? I got a verse. In this was manifest the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, and we've quoted the verse, that God first loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. I love that word, propitiation. It's good stuff. He didn't just pay enough penalty to sneak us by. He paid for every sin of every human in the whole world multiple times over. He's never going to run out of sacrifice ability. He's never going to run out of salvation space. He's never going to run out of love. Because God is love. God is love. When we get to heaven, it's going to be a different thing. We're going to find out something. How much faith is it going to take us when we're standing in front of the Lord God Almighty? I, I believe in him. If you, if you don't believe in him yet, you won't be there. Because the whole world that rejected him is going to get a chance that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And they'll believe in him then, but it won't save them. Because we're not saved by sight. We're saved by grace through faith. How would, why would you even think about trusting a God who doesn't love you? Come on, that's good stuff, guys. In this was manifest the love of God toward us because God sent His only begotten Son into the world. We receive three things when we receive God's love. You ready? Number one, we receive the ability to love God back and with that, to love others. To love other people. Who wants to live a life without love in it? Not me. I don't want that. I'm not talking about lust, guys. I'm telling you right now, I'm talking about love. The whole world would do better if you wore more clothes. And the whole world would do better if mamas had enough guts to make their girls and boys wear decent clothes. thought so. He said, well, if I do that, I won't be their friend. You're supposed to love them enough to be their parent. Number two, hereby we know we dwell in him, he and us, because he given us the spirit. We have the assurance of the Holy Spirit on the inside. Romans 8 Excuse me, verse 9 says, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, then he's none of his. But you back down a little bit down the page, and he says, His Spirit bears witness with our Spirit that we are the sons of God. Isn't that good stuff? And then, thirdly, in this thing, look at this the assurance that God sent His Son into the world. We have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. You say, How do you know? Because he saved me. Because he saved me. Christians are divided up into a great different bunches of groups. Some of them are so good, they'll tell you that Jesus came to the world and died and paid for the penalty of sin, but it wasn't enough, so you have to help them. And you're going to add something so God allows you in because Jesus came up short. You ever think about how ridiculously and I will use the word stupid, that is. That you're going to be able to do what Jesus couldn't do. Give it up. You should have just saved yourself and forced your way into heaven. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. But the next verse says, for we are his creation. 
We are the work of God created by him unto good works. How do you do that? I'm not a slave. How do we operate? We operate off of love. Next time that kid of yours gives you so much trouble that you, you're ready just to whack them, that's a Jeffrey word, whacking them, okay? Remember that you love that kid. Can I tell you? I understand times are tough. I was in a Walmart years, several years ago. That's probably the last time I went. I go up when I need something, okay? But I had a couple little things in my hand. And I was standing, this is, uh, this is how long ago it was. There were checkers at the checkout line. That's how long ago it was. And they were, they were working. And there was a lady in front of me. She had a, just a, almost a newborn in her hand. It could have been over two or three months. Screaming to high heaven. Wah! Isn't it amazing how something so little can make so much noise? Hmm? God, you know what God did? He, God has a sense of humor, I think, too. You love to hear a baby laugh. <laughs> I dare you to get some video of some little baby laughing out loud and not smile. You can't do it. I'm telling you right now. If you can do that, you're an ogre. Okay? She had one screaming to high heavens in her hand. She had one in the buggy back. Looked like it was about 18, 19 months old, screaming to high heaven. And she had one that was a pretty good sized toddler sitting in the buggy, screaming to high heaven. You ever been like that? I'll tell you how frustrated she was, guys. I said, ma'am, can, can I help you? And she said, yeah, here, she gave me the kid. She did. I just gave me the kid. And so I was born a papa. I can tell you that right now. All right. And I did what you do with all colic kids. You guys ever deal with a colic kid? They're either eating, puking, or sleeping. That's all they're doing. They, they don't, and, and they sleep and cry and scream in their sleep sometimes. It's really hard. I took the baby, turned him over, held him in one hand. You know, mamas can't do that, but I was patting. She didn't care. And I was patting the kid on the back, you know. Started patting, and he just calmed down and kind of went limp, like, you know. And she's going, "What do you do, honey? He's I, I can't." The only the end of guys for ten minutes. I said, "Ma'am, <clears throat> you look like I'm in, I'm in the line now at Walmart." The other two kind of look and go, "Whoa, he ain't screaming. We better quit." And they sat there, and I said, "Do you have anybody to help you?" How many of you ever raised a colic kid? Just one. I want you to know you've never experienced anything like that. We had one little girl, her name was Becky, one of our foster kids we took in. We got her. Her mom had abused her because she was colicky. And she would not quit crying. Night and day, she screamed and cried and screamed and cried. What was she, about five or six months old when we got her? Already had had broken bones and stuff like that because it's frustrating, guys. We've had other ones, and some of my own were that way. And I told her, she goes, what am I going to do? So first of all, you're going to need to get some help. Do you have a mom, a dad, somebody, an aunt, uncle to come and help you? We all need relief every once in a while. Do you all know that? Why do you think I see all my grandkids all the time? The parents are getting them at my house. i got to have some relief. And it's, a tra it's tough, but we do it. You know what I mean? And we love it. Can I tell you this? That don't mean you don't love them. And God, I don't know that he ever does that with us because he doesn't get wore out like we do. He has an everlasting love, is what Jeremiah said. She did call, got some help, and 
And I told us, you know what's going to happen one day? Same thing that happened with ours, same thing that happened with Becky's, same thing that happened to any of y'all's that you raised. One day they'll quit crying and you'll go, they must be dead. And you'll run in there and they'll be giggling. And real love makes you remember the giggle and forget all the other. Isn't that good? You know how we love? Because God loved us. We have the assurance of the indwelling spirit and that God sent a son into the world to save us. Not only we know three things, we receive three things. You ready? We know and believe the love of God because we believe in Jesus whom he has sent. We got that. Number two, we have the assurance that passes all understanding that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Listen to me. We got boldness in the day of judgment. I'm not crawling in and cringing to walk into the presence of the Lord. You know why? Number one, he's going to come after me. Or when I die, I get to go be with him. But I want you to understand, we have boldness. We have peace that the world doesn't have because God loves us. God loves us. I wonder how many people are sitting in this room right now refuse to believe that. God can't love me if he only knew me. God does know you. And just like the rich young ruler, he already loves you. He told Jeremiah, before thou wast, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you, I loved you. And he told him later it was an everlasting love. Not only that, there's no fear in love. There's no fear in love. Are you afraid? Are you afraid that person that you love or doesn't love you back? Are you a teenager? They live with that constantly. They're pretty sure everybody in the whole world is going to throw them away. That's not going to happen because we'd already done it if we could. You know what I mean? I, somebody sent me a meme during the COVID thing when everybody was shut in. Showed a little girl sitting next to her mama. And she was looking up. She goes, Mom, am I adopted? And the mom said, well, not yet. I just put the ad in the paper yesterday. You know? Jesus said, without love. Listen. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You've you got to get this, guys. The origin of love is not from humans. It comes from God. If you don't believe God loves you, you won't love the other people either. Jesus, hereby they shall know you're my disciples if you love one another as I have loved you. You get that down. And you can love people. See, preacher, you don't understand me. No, but I understand me. I came from that. It was the love of God that changed my life, changed my heart, changed my perspective about things and people and me and souls. But he said that love diminished brings what? In the last eyes perilous day shall come. Why? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. The word there is just like lusters, if you want to know. Look at the world we're living in. What's causing it? Lack of love back to God. You fall in love with God. He'll fix a lot of things. You say, well, preacher, I don't know if I can. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. See that D-E-U-2? That, that means Deuteronomy. That's the fifth book. I just picked out one book. Nine times in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Just in the book of Deuteronomy. Nine times. Jesus quoted the verses over and over and over. Thou love shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. Guys, you're not going to do that unless you know that he loves you. See, that's the, that's the requirement. That's the requirement. 
When you ask Jesus, he said, what, what's the big thing to do? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbors yourself. Look what he said. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love. You ever tried to operate your family without love in it? It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. Well, this is my obligation. I have to love my husband. I have to love my wife. I have to. It's a tough world, ain't it? You can control what you love because the Lord said, love not the world. You can control what you do love because he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. So God wouldn't put on you what you can't do. But he can make it a lot easier. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Say, preacher, I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. That's because you've never experienced it then. Because the experience goes past understanding. It goes straight to assurance. And we have this assurance that Jesus Christ was sent into the world because God loved us. Look at verse 18. That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to the know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge that you may be filled with the knowledge the fullness of God. Years ago, there was no preacher evangelist saying, uh, I just lost his name here. But he said this, you're trying to figure out something that you don't have to figure out. He said, you know, I know nothing about electricity. Nothing. I know nothing about wiring lights. I know nothing about putting wiring through the wall. I know nothing about getting the power to it. I don't understand anything about how we run, how the Places where the electricity is the case that I don't know any of that stuff. But if you come around to my house, I almost never, ever, ever just sit around in the dark because I hadn't figured it all out. I just use it. I just use it. The scripture says in the book of uh, Romans and in the book, of, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Can I do that? And I'm going to be done here in a second. Love is a, an expensive thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. No, that ain't it. Where am I going to? That. Well, I'll just move to it. 1 Corinthians 13. I know it had a 3 in it. Okay. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'll do nothing. That's a description of the modern Christian. They got 40 million commentaries. They can, they can quote Greek and Hebrew. They, can, they just don't know much about the love of God. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Now look in this. Verse 4 through 8. Charity suffereth long, doth not behave itself unseemly, rejoices not in iniquity, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. You know what that means? Does it mean that because God loved the world, everybody in the world is going to get saved? No, they don't. It means this, what the last verse says in chapter 13, verse 13. And now about a faith and hope and charity. These three things. By the way, that word charity simply means to love enough to give. In this instance, he's talking about God giving and us. Now about a faith, hope, and charity. These three. Now listen to it. But the greatest of these is charity. When I get to heaven, I won't need faith anymore. When I'm standing with the Savior, I won't even need hope anymore. But my Bible says 
there is no time in eternity that I won't know love. Because God is love. Will you pray with me just a minute? Father in heaven, Lord, what a privilege to be loved by you. And I think there's probably hands full of people right here in this room, Lord, who are right now saying, God, don't love me like that. Yes, he does. God, I pray that your spirit would deal with their hearts. Let them know that you're not the God of wrath. You're the God of love. Is there a wrath of God? Absolutely. But he's life and he's love. And he's all willing that any repent. But more than that, Lord, not just to get out of sin, but to get into fellowship with you. To know the love of God, which passes all understanding. I, 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 that's what I want. And I want them to know that God loves them. And if they're here not saved, that he loves them enough to not burden them down with the penalty of their sin, but he would take the penalty and put it on his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died in their place. Help them, Lord, to see that. And we pray, Father, and thank you that we can love because you created us and you are love. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me. If you need to make a decision right now, maybe you don't know Christ as Savior. Can I tell you, say, preacher, the Bible says, with a mouth, confessions made to salvation. You say, what do I pray? Tell God. He's pretty good. You don't have to be an official prayer to tell God. Just tell him, you know, you're lost and you want him as your Savior. If you're here and you're out there and you wandered away from God, come back. He loves you. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your love. Thank you for the blessings that you give us, Lord. I pray that we would show your love in the world. I pray that uh, we would love like you love, Lord. I pray that, that as we go our way this week, that, that we share your love with others, Lord, and that they see your love through us, Lord. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.